Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Dario Sonchowskas. Today is the 29th of April, 2020. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's morning session uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. And I believe you can find a lot of useful information here for yourselves, guys. So uh, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So. Uh, now then, quick update on what's happening here. So this is this has been updated. So yep, the number continues to rise, and we have surpassed uh, the, the one million in the United States. So um, of course, the the total amount of deaths uh, is much more than in Italy. It's twice more uh, than than in Italy. So um, yep, the situation in there is not. Uh, the best, I would say, if uh, Europe is slowly easing off, the uh, U.S. is catching up. So it's quite interesting how all this has traveled uh, from here from, from Asia. And Asia is kind of doing okay-ish um, in that term. Uh, now, like I said, it's a, now it's... Um, Europe, who is performing, starting to perform better. Um, Eastern Europe is especially uh, looking quite good. And then now it's traveling into, yep, uh, as I said, now it's US, US's turn uh, to kind of... Uh, go for that peak. Um, well, that's, uh, yeah, at least that's how it looks like right now. So, in, in general, guys, stay safe, stay careful, uh, of course. Uh, just uh, you know, take your regular, standard, normal uh, precautions. I mean, that should be just common sense, and uh, yep, everything should be fine. So um, now, then, jumping into a few charts, uh, looking at the German DAX here, um, you can see that yeah, yesterday we had a nice pop here uh, with, uh, above this barrier, above this 10,820 zone. I talked about this one. We managed to form a new high, and uh, yep, uh, then the um, the index closed back below this territory below this 10,820 zone so in a way kind of uh, kind of indicating that maybe the bulls are not ready uh, to push this one higher however looking at the cash index this morning it is making its way back above this territory so we'll basically have ourselves a nice opening gap here to the upside the price is currently uh moving around the uh slightly above this barrier slightly above this 10,820 zone so yep we'll be very careful here as I said, if it continues to trade above this above this barrier, then uh, above this 10,820 zone, then well, all is good for uh, for the buyers, and uh, we could see this one climbing a little bit f further north. Now, of course, the main target here right now for us is that psychological 11,000 zone. Um, but slightly above that, we do have the uh, 11,447 territory, which is the low of the uh, 6th of March, and also coinciding with the 100 EMA here on the daily chart. So in a way, very good potential target. Uh, but of course, let's not rush into anything yet. Uh, let's wait for that opening and... Uh, of course, like I said, continue monitoring this 10,820 zone. If if the uh, index continues to balance above it, then, yep, we will continue aiming to the upside. However, if it starts dropping back below this 10,820 zone, then, well, I mean, maybe not all is good here in the bull block, and uh, we could see this one 
uh, drifting a little bit lower. However, in order to get comfortable with the downside, as I've mentioned previously, we would prefer to see a drop below that psychological 10,000 zone. You could start looking at this level here, the 10,280 zone uh, for that ups, uh, for that downside. But um, yep, and like I said, the more comfortable level for us is this uh, 10. Uh, 10,000 zone. So uh, keep your eyes on uh, that one for now, guys. So Uh, now then, jumping into FTSE 100, um, looking at this picture here, it's a little bit more promising here for the bulls. Um, looking at this price action, you can see that the uh, the index managed to close uh, above this 5,895 territory, which I talked about uh, previously. And uh, looking at the cash index right now, the, the price is currently at around... Um, 5,979 zones. So that's is this is slightly above uh, where it closed yesterday. So basically, still everything's kind of looking quite positive here uh, for um, for this index. In a way, it may drift a little bit to the downside here. Maybe test. Uh, it could test this uh, this area here again, the 5,895. And if it provides decent support, we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside. So uh, the higher levels that we're targeting here, well, initially we will not going to drag this one too much to the upside. We'll drag this one right here. So this is the 6,231 zone. That's what we're going to be aiming for. And uh, if it gets broken, then yep, the next potential target could be around the 6,460 level, which is the low of the 28th of February. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, very interesting developments here. So like I said, for now, we're more bullish than bearish on this on this one. But um, yeah, in case this suddenly starts falling back below the 5,895 zone or even the 5,815 territory, then well, I mean, this is where it could turn out to be a little bit more ugly for the bulls. So keep your eyes on Keep your eyes on this one. Uh, CAC 40. So um, also uh, haven't looked at this one for quite a while and uh, basically managed to push higher, managed to create a new high uh, for um, a new high for for April. Um, however, as you can see, this the highest point of April, which is around the 4,570 Let's round it up towards the 78 zone. Um, the index uh, closed yesterday below this, slightly below this. Um, although it, it, yes, it did hit a new high for April. Um, however, yes, it closed slightly below it. Um, the similar story, like with the the previous two indices. I mean, there is a chance for this one to drift further north. Uh, we are not going to drag this one too much to the upside. Initially, we'll target this little level of 4,925 territory, which is the high of the 10th of March. And then we'll take it from there. For now, like I said, let's keep it short and simple. Um, yes, it is. We are leaning a little bit more to the upside. However, we'll remain cautious. And in case this suddenly starts dropping uh, back below this barrier right here, the 4,333 zone, then well, I mean, brace yourselves. We could see a bit of a decline. First, uh, we're gonna target the uh, this little level here, the the low. Uh, the, is this the lowest point of? Yes, that is the low. The current lowest point of April which is roughly around the 4140 uh 42 zone. So this is the one right here. So uh, 4,142, that's what we're going to be aiming for if we get a drop below the 4,333 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. But as I said, this is the downside scenario. Uh, for now, we're leaning more towards the upside. And uh, yep, like I said, we will be targeting slightly higher levels. Uh, Brent oil. So a very tricky situation here. I mean, uh, yesterday it did slide lower, but the, by the end of the day, it kind of recovered and managed to close the day in the positive territory. Today, it's also it's also looking quite positive. Um, however, as you can see, it continues to struggle to overcome this 21.64 level that I talked about uh, previously, and that's the lowest point of March. And right now, as, as if in March it acted as a fantastic area of support, now this level is taking the role of resistance. So basically, if, long story short, for now we're just going to continue observing this one. Again, we have two days left in in April. We want to see. We want to be very careful because. Mm, um, yep, 
uh, we don't want to have anything any crazy moves here or at least we would like to maybe or actually I'll probably will let me reiterate this we would like to have a crazy move because for now it's very tricky it's really un it seems that the the commodity is very undecisive and uh, that's why we would like to see maybe a, st a strong move in either of directions would do we're not going to try to capture that that move but we will try to um, kind of position accordingly after the move so that's why probably like i said wait for that uh, uh wait for that move and of course as we are getting uh, kind of closer to the uh, well, uh, to the end of the last day of of April, I mean this kind of and given the fact that in the past couple of days here, uh, past few days, I mean the there there we haven't seen a huge spike in either direction or a huge move in either direction. Uh, that's why we're going to remain a little bit on the neutral side and just wait for that move. So that's why guys don't rush into this yet. Uh, wait for it and uh, then uh, position yourself accordingly. Accordingly. Um, jumping into silver now uh, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while and let me just clear up the chart because as you can see this has, has a lot of, has become invalid here um, so uh, no not this one uh, one moment just bear with me one moment um, there we go so looking at this picture here and probably let me just jump into a four hour chart because what I'm seeing here is uh, that the uh, the commodity, the precious metal seems to be kind of in a squeeze a little bit. So in a way it's kind of uh, stuck here. Uh, slightly below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 14th of April and on the other hand it's kind of stuck above this short term upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 1st of April. So both of these lines are a bit tentative. More maybe let's say this this lower side the lower one is the more tentative. Uh, the downside line is a little bit more interesting because it does have a, little, a few more touches here. So um, and that's why guys for now we're going to remain neutral because as you can see like I said it is kind of in a squeeze. However these uh, these tend to present very good opportunities. Um, so that's why we're not going to do anything yet. Uh, we're just going to continue observing this one. Uh, we need to wait for a clear break out of this uh, out of this little pattern uh, before considering a further directional move. Um, now, in a way, you could keep your uh, in a way you could position yourself in position yourselves in terms of uh, levels. Now. We will keep if we get a break through this downside line. Ideally, we would prefer to see a push above the 15.44 zone, which is the high of the 23rd of April, and then we could aim for higher levels. Then, of course, initially we'll aim for the highest point of April, which is around the 15.84 zone. And if that gets broken, then the next target for us could be somewhere higher, a little maybe somewhere around here, or even maybe capturing this little low, the low of 9th of March, which is around the 16.54 level so again guys for now you know in a way like I said yes it could travel higher but first of all we would need to see a break of this downside line and a push above the uh, 1544 zone in a way let me just put an arrow here so this is what this is our scenario for the upside in terms of the downside we well logical we need to see a drop below this um, upside support line and to be honest on this one with the downside we'll take a little bit of a more conservative approach and wait for a drop below this 14.50 level which is the low of the 21st of April because this way the uh, the, uh, the commodity would confirm a forthcoming lower low and then the next target for us could be somewhere around here near the 13.79 zone and then we would take it from there guys because like I said for now uh, yes it, it is uh, looking quite interesting um, however like I said wait for that confirmation break a quick update on ripple I'm um, not going to spend too much time on this one but basically just kind of working out nicely so it reached one of my levels that I talked about yesterday the uh, 0.2163 level and it you can see that this is where the crypto is currently getting a hold up so all eyes are on this I mean don't get me wrong if this continues to hold we may see a bit of a correction here to the downside but but if if it manages to remain um, above this uh, this upper side of this pre this previous range um, near the 0 0.2053 zone then we could see another round of buying potentially kind of leading the price to towards this 200 EMA on the daily chart so something to keep in mind 
if in case this drops back below this uh, 0 0.2052 zone um, and closes the day below this, then well, I mean, we could see maybe a bit of a, a decline here um, inside this little range again towards this level, towards the 0 0.1760 zone. So uh, something to consider for now. Uh, like I said, we are a little bit more on the bullish side. Uh, but uh, we are not, given the fact that it's currently getting a strong hold up near this 0 0.2163, we're not excluding a, a possible move to the downside, a possible correction to the downside towards this 0 0.2052 territory. So keep your eyes on that one. Litecoin. Now this one's a bit um, struggling, I would say. Um, so although other other uh, kind of its, its counterparts are pushing higher, this one is struggling a little bit with the upside. Now, uh, we will continue staying a little bit on the neutral side here because we need to see a confirmation break above the 40, 47.68, 69 zone before uh, considering higher levels. Until then, we're not going to do anything. Yes, on one hand, it is climbing higher, trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the 16th of April. On the other hand, it is still kind of below this key barrier here, which is the um, the current highest point of April, so near the 47.68 zone. So if we get a nice pop above this, then yep, we will aim for for, for, uh, for the upside initially we'll target the uh, the 200 EMA here on the daily chart after that we'll take it from there um, and with the downside well we're taking a very conservative approach here and uh, we will get comfortable with lower levels if we get a drop below the 37 uh, 37.94 zone so roughly around here guys which is the uh, the is this the lowest point is this is the not the low no this is still not the lowest point of April but the low of the 16th of April. So, yep, keep your eyes on that one. Um, in a way, to be honest, uh, if you think that this is a little bit too far, guys, um, you could start looking at the uh, at the downside if we get a drop below, for example, this level, the low of the 27th of April, which is around the 43.15 territory, uh, because this way the mm, uh, the uh, the crypto would be placed already below its upside support line and maybe there it could have more chances to drift lower so the only thing is with this scenario is that don't forget that it's very close still and uh, uh, yep um, in a way there could be a quick reversal here so if you are looking at something like this uh, then well definitely have a very a careful st stop loss in order not to kind of uh, in order to avoid let's say this one suddenly reversing back to the upside so keep your eyes on this one uh, AUD is USD. So here the situation is quite interesting. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I, I talked about uh, this pair a lot yesterday. So for now everything is working according to plan. So yesterday we saw the candle staying in the positive territory. Um, it's fractionally above the 100 EMA here on the uh, on the uh, daily chart and as you can see now it continues to travel higher it is aiming for uh, we are still aiming for our uh, main target which is the 200 EMA and the level slightly above that uh, towards the 0 0.6677 zone um, that's basically marked by the lowest point of August lowest point of September near the lowest point of October and the highest point of March so very strong potential target here um, so now the pair continues to kind of move in that direction um, in terms of the downside, we, we need to see a drop all the way here back below the 0 0.6254 territory somewhere around here in order to get comfortable a little bit more with the downside. So keep your eyes on this one. A USD CAD. Now, I haven't looked at this, this one for quite a while and this one right now is drifting lower. However, um, it is at a very, very tricky spot. Now, first of all, let me just clear up the chart here a little bit and um, let me just remove some of these levels. Let, let's have a quick new fresh look at this. So, um, first of all, of course, uh, as you can see, I removed the downside line because that's no longer uh, valid. Um, the pair after finding some resistance around here near the 1.4261.62 zone, uh, uh, it started drifting lower and continues to drift lower. And the big question here is can it continue moving further down? However, you see, looking at this daily chart, uh, it, for now it's unclear because what we would need to see is a nice good strong move below the current lowest point of April, which is around the 1.3856, because what we don't want to 
see is a range here because if it dr drifts a little bit lower, finds resistance, uh, sorry, finds, sorry, resistance, finds support near this 1.3856 level and then rebounds back to the upside. So then basically we would be uh, confirming a nice wide range here. Um, so that's why we, we don't want to see and we don't want to get caught up in that. So in order to aim for lower levels, we will wait for um, a drop below the and below this current lowest point of April near the 1.3856 level. So keep your eyes on this one. In terms of the upside, again, probably if you follow the same logic, then uh, we would need to see a push above the 1.4261-62 zone here in order to get comfortable with, with higher areas. For now, to be honest, uh, we're not going to be doing anything here. We're not going to be touching this one and just observing uh, these two levels that I just mentioned, the 1.4262 on the upside and the 1.3856 on the downside. So we need to see a breakthrough one of those. Uh, USD JPY, so continues to drift lower. So had a nice drop yesterday. Uh, it continues to move further down. It's 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 already creating a new low for, for April. Well, to be honest, all this is not looking good here for uh, USD JPY. Um, uh, how, and for now, to be honest, we will continue targeting the downside. So of course, uh, one of my main targets was around the 105.12 zone, which is the low of the uh, 16th of March. But what we're going to just there, there is a little level here to consider um, roughly around the 105.1992 zone, somewhere around here, marked by the inside swing high of 10th of March. And uh, as you can see, also, it kind of came close here, acting as a good area of support on the uh, 16th of April and the 17th of, oh, sorry, April. April, the 16th of March and the 17th of March. So we'll keep an eye on this level here, the 105.9290 zone, and uh, then uh, this is going to be probably our first tar little target. Um, if it gets, if this is just overcome easily, then yep, the next level to watch is the 105.12 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, GBP JPY. Now uh, here it's also a bit of a difficult story. So yesterday the pair remained below this 21 EMA here on the daily chart. Uh, so it drifted lower, but still stayed above this key support zone I've mentioned. And this uh, this one here is around the 132.44 level. So um, we need to see a nice good clear drop below this in order to aim for further declines. This morning we're seeing a bit of a recovery here. Um, if the pair for some reason pushes back above the back to the upside here and climbs above the 21 day EMA here now this is where the bull, uh, the bulls probably will get a little bit more on the uh, will be a little bit more happy and uh, we could see more of them jumping in here and pushing the pair higher however as i said we are uh, near this um, near this key area of support right now so if this by any chance gets broken this 132.44 zone then well i mean we could consider some deeper extensions to the downside. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, GBP USD also quick update here. So yesterday, the this barrier here acted as a fantastic area of resistance, the 1.2523 zone. I talked about this one a lot, and uh, basically uh, the pair kind of drifted back down. Um, it, this morning we're seeing a bit of a push here again to the upside. However, it's still below the 1.2523 uh, zone. So um, in a way, for now we're just going Gonna remain cautious. Uh, we need to see either a good, either a good break here, a push above the 1.2523 zone in order to aim for higher levels. But if it struggles, then well, the idea of a potential head and head and shoulders pattern here could be back on the table if this barrier, the 1.2523 zone, continues to hold. So something to consider, guys. Something to keep in mind. And yep, watch the the levels. Uh, Euro USD. So uh, it pushed higher yesterday, managed to break the, the downside line. And uh, this is what I was talking about, guys, yesterday. So, and to be honest, all the time, I mean, uh, I was talking about this pair and I was saying that not only did we need to see a break of this downside line, but we also would, would like to see a push above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart. And as you can see, we got a break here. It kind of remained for a little bit uh, above this downside line and kind of drifted back down. So in a way, if we get a break above this uh, downside line again, and we see the rate climbing above the 200 day EMA here on the four hour chart, then we will get a little bit more excited with the upside. Um, for now, it's it's back below this downside line. So if this downside line remains intact, 
then well I mean we could see a bit of a decline here again so however uh, as I've mentioned previously as I keep talking about this we need to see a nice daily close below the 1.0777 uh, in order to get comfortable with lower levels so for now uh, be very careful, be very cautious, and uh, yep, uh, let's see how this is all this is going to play out. But as I said, for now, guys, uh, we are very careful. And as I said, we need to see a pop above that 200, day, 200 EMA on the 4-hour chart before uh, considering higher areas. And on the downside, we need to see a drop below the 1.0777 in order to aim for lower levels. So, okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. And uh, there was, a, there, well, I went through a lot of instruments. And uh, I hope, like I said, you found some of it kind of... Uh, useful out <laughs> he has the same word basically so uh in in other words guys thank you very much for all your support thank you for your likes for your comments for your for your for everything for your views and i really appreciate that so if you want to capture my video later on my traders uh tea time 13 around 13 15 gmt um and then we'll have it uh, we'll take it from there see um what the market has uh, how how the market has performed in this period um and uh, yep we'll cover some of these instruments some new ones and then we'll take it from there. So thank you very much, guys, and see you later.